Western Digital's lineup has changed significantly since we defined its naming scheme in 2014. Since then, the company has expanded into SSDs, has reduced RPM on some WD Blue drives, and has all but killed the Western Digital Green Series drives. Today, we're defining the differences between WD Blue, Black, Red, and Purple hard drives and then looking into the new WD Green, Blue, and Black SSDs. Every now and then we do naming convention content to go through manufacturers and their numerous names that don't always make a whole lot of sense, like the MSI video we did not long ago, and the Asus one prior to that. Today we're focusing on WD and their rainbow of colors for hard drives. Again, red, blue, black, green, purple for the most part, and then some of the same for SSDs. Seagate has another hard drive vendor uses a similar naming scheme, but theirs is all creature names. So Skyhawk, Iron Wolf, and Barracuda would be theirs. We'll look at those in the future. This content, by the way, has already been published on the website. So if you want the tables that we're going to be talking through here, you can hit the link in the description below for the full article where Eric Hamilton has done all the legwork to define these differences. The briefest overview possible of each drive is that WD Purple, probably the least known of all of these, is used or meant to be used for surveillance systems. WD Red is meant to be used for network attached storage or RAID configurations within your desktop. And then WD Blue is kind of a mainstream drive and WD Black is the mainstream plus one. It's a little bit higher end than the mainstream drives, but we'll talk about these specific differences as we go through them. Now, when it comes to hard drives, you can still use these pretty much however you want. You could use WD Red as a standalone drive in your system if you wanted to, even though it's meant to be used in a RAID. You could use WD Purple as your game storage drive if you really wanted to. So there's no hard limitation to what these can do. It's just where they're geared towards and what technologies are inside of the drives, how the controller is configured, things like that. There was a brief period that some folks may remember where WD Reds were a better buy than WD Blues because they were the same RPM, same capacity, and in some cases were cheaper. That's not really something that exists anymore, but it shows that if you do some digging and you don't need exactly the feature set in a particular drive, you could get away with using one of the other ones often for cheaper or at a greater capacity than might be available in the whatever series you were originally hoping to buy. WD Blue is the most common Western digital drive that we recommend for gaming storage alongside Seagate's alternatives, but we do so carefully with the WD Blues these days. The previous WD Green line has been consumed by WD Blue. It's dead for hard drives. You won't find WD Green anymore. And that means that Western Digital now offers both 5400 RPM and 7200 RPM WD Blue drives at one terabyte and up. There's technically a 500 gigabyte capacity, but those are being phased out everywhere because the platter density doesn't much make sense for 500 gigabytes these days. WD Blue at 7200 RPM is what we'd recommend for most game storage or higher density media like RAW files, but you'll need to be sure that you're not accidentally buying a 5400 RPM variant because they exist again in several capacities. The one terabyte WD Blue drive at 7200 RPM is sort of, as far as Western Digital's offerings, the go-to for gaming storage. We would recommend archiving your games there rather than a 5400 RPM drive at a higher capacity because the speed difference is noticeable, particularly with certain types of media. And then as for potential downsides, the blue drives really only lack a few features. One of them is the vibration protection, which the usefulness of that is sort of debatable unless you really have the long uptimes and need the longer service life of a WD Black drive. And then there is time limited error recovery or TLER that is also not found on WD Blue. So if that's something you specifically want, don't buy a blue. As for capacities, the 7200 RPM version is limited to one terabyte. So if you want more than that, you're gonna have to go to WD Black unless you're okay with getting a two terabyte and higher 5400 RPM drive, which we generally would not recommend for gaming storage or for any type of media that needs to be accessed more quickly. Now for long-term archival storage, it's just fine. The more noticeable difference is the two-year warranty on the WD Blue drives and the fact that they're significantly cheaper per gigabyte than WD Black at around $50 for one terabyte 7200 RPM versus one terabyte 7200 RPM Black for $77. So you've got a $27 gap there. WD Blue is available up to six terabytes for $200, but these capacities only spin at 5400 RPM, again, and are for bulk storage. The WD Blue drives have historically used Marvell controllers and then Samsung chips for the cache on those drives. Getting into WD Black now, the difference again, five-year warranty out the gate is the biggest, most noticeable one, and then they primarily differentiate themselves in speed. So they're all 7200 RPM from 500 gigabytes 
up to six terabytes. And the six terabyte model, which is sort of the flagship of these WD Black drives, has a higher amount of platters in it. So it's five platters at 1.2 terabytes each, which is how you get your six terabytes, give or take. And the Black Drive also has 10 total read or write heads in it, and that maximizes the data density per platter, and it also minimizes the travel required of the heads in the unit. The previous WD Black 4 terabyte drive had half the DRAM cache as the current 128 megabyte build with the cache provided by Nanya, N-A-N-Y-A, accompanied by a dual core controller from LSI, or what's left of them anyway. WD Black focuses less on noise than WD Blue, but does include vibration protection features with that five-year warranty. There are only two hard drives left. The WD Red drives are meant for NAS usage, so your network attached storage. We actually use three WD Red two terabyte drives. They're a couple years old now in RAID 5 in our render machine, which we showed when we were rebuilding the thing, and they've been great for that kind of usage. The largest capacity WD Red is eight terabytes at $330, and the eight terabyte models, interestingly, use helium to seal them rather than air. Air is a lot heavier, and so using helium means that they can fit an additional 1.2 terabyte platter within the chassis of the hard drive, totaling seven platters, which also encounter reduced resistance because it's spinning through helium rather than spinning through air. This feature is only on a few of the WD Red drives, like the eight terabyte model, and in general is useful because lower friction from lower resistance means lower heat and consequently reduced power draw. The Helioseal tech is only in that eight terabyte unit and other specs of the WD Red drives include significantly faster load and unload cycle ratings as seen in our table that we have on the site, or hopefully on the screen now, and they've also got better service life expected over their alternatives from WD. The 8 terabyte red drives have 14 read and write heads as opposed to, for example, the 6 terabyte black drives with 10, another LSI controller within them, and 128 megabytes of cache. WD red drives also critically have some error recovery for RAID configurations, which is important if you actually want to use a RAID and they have NASware included and a three-year warranty, so a bit better than blue in that regard. They do tend to spin a bit slower, though, depending, again, on which blue you're looking at. So that leaves WD Purple, which is all that's left. This is the one that's meant for surveillance and is, again, the least popular. So as a surveillance drive, it is, of course, going to be running writes pretty much nonstop. It doesn't have much other purpose in life than running writes for whatever camera system it's configured to work with. And that means mostly steady state run times. And as such, there's custom firmware and caching built to handle those nonstop writes. WD Purple drives have an annualized workload of 180 terabytes per year, backed by a three year warranty. Because these drives write nonstop and then overwrite footage as they go, this rating is critical for the nearly 100% uptimes for security purposes. The drives also use something WD calls all frame technology which theoretically reduces pixelation and frame loss in video capture, but that's not our specialty, so we can't really comment on how well it works. TLER and ATA streaming command sets are also supported in the WD Purple drives. Pricing of WD Purple is comparable to others in WD's lineup, with four terabytes priced at $135. Moving on to Western Digital's SSDs, we see a parallel arrangement of the drive colors to the hard drive counterparts. Green is the low end, Blue is the mainstream market and black is sort of the performance market and it's currently pre-order only. So we haven't actually tested one of the black SSDs just yet. The pricing for these is also in the same hierarchy, green, blue, black, with WD green starting at about $75 for 240 gigabytes, blue filling the mid-range market, one terabyte for $260 or 250 gigabytes for $85. And then the WD black SSD is on pre-order for $200 at 512 gigabytes. The WD Green SSD is a DRAM-less configuration on 15 nanometer TLC NAND supported by SMI controllers. The SSD is rated only for 37,000 IOPS 4K read and 63,000 4K write, significantly slower than most competition on the market, and falling into WD's weak point, which is SSD competitive price positioning versus performance, because it is a heavily saturated market at this point. WD Blue uses the SanDisk X400 as a foundation, but with custom firmware and different drive capacities than SanDisk's offerings. WD Blue also uses 15 nanometer planar NAND, which is something we described in our What is NAND animation and video previously, and deploys a Marvell controller with Micron DRAM on the drive. 
Blue drives focus on higher endurance, aiming for better than average as their target positioning, and push endurance as a more critical aspect of the drive than speed. The blue warranty stands at three years and might be more competitively positioned than the green drive. WD Blue SSDs are rated around 97,000 IOPS read at 250 gigabytes or 79,000 IOPS write. Form factors are available for 2.5 inch and M2 2280 sticks, both on the SATA 3 interface. And the interface isn't completely saturated here, but it's getting close. Finally, WD Black SSDs stand at the top of the stack again and are going to be available in 256 and 512 capacities immediately. They're not out yet. Pre order right now at time of filming. And at time of filming, again, those pre orders are at $110 for the 256 model and $200 for the 512 gigabyte model. The difference here with WD Black versus Blue and Green is that WD Black uses the PCIe interface as its transfer medium rather than SATA, and that is on PCIe by four lanes. This ships only in an M2 2280 stick form factor, and it's rated for two gigabytes per second read, tremendous improvement over the WD Blue SSD, with 700 to 800 megabytes per second write. Random ratings are 170K IOPS read and 130K IOPS write for 256 gigabytes with an increased average power rating of 135 milliwatts over the 70 milliwatts of WD Blue. WD Black SSDs include the same five-year warranty as WD Black hard drives, leaving some parallelism between the two. And that pretty much wraps up the differences between the Western Digital hard drives and solid state drives. So hopefully the colors make more sense now. The hard drives are, once you understand those, everything else is easy. Yeah, basically, again, blue is mainstream, black is high end, green is a void. And uh, there might be some validity to green SSDs, but the price positioning is not great right now for their performance. And then red and purple are sort of these special outliers, red being raid, purple being surveillance. Probably no one in our audience really needs that for the most part, but it might be a good buy if you can find them cheap just because they are a lower volume, at least in this market, uh, type of product. So, uh, article link in the description below for the full tables and all of this stuff recapped in text if you prefer that format. Thank you again for watching. Go to patreon.com slash gamersnexus to help us out directly or click the link in the post-roll video. Subscribe for more content. I'll see you all next time.